Hello everyone. Um, now this is obviously a Witcher channel and some people might wonder why um, I haven't come back to making Witcher videos now that the next gen update is out. And the reason for that is that I simply cannot really get excited about all of that. There are some changes that I obviously like. Uh, some, however, I absolutely despise all the Netflix stuff I could have done without. Uh, a new quest doesn't really uh, push me towards playing the game. And what really keeps me from it are basically two things. First of all, um, the way they implemented all these new graphical features seems to be in a very janky way. Like I haven't looked exactly into it, but I saw a few videos basically su suggesting that they're using a bridge um, that reinterprets uh, commands directed at Direct 11 and simply translates them into Direct 12. So it's not a native Direct 12 implementation. Uh, I haven't been able to verify that, but uh, there are several indications uh, that show that that might be true. And Microsoft is actually a company that uh, didn't recommend doing this because that actually costs a lot of CPU power, which seems to be what a lot of people are reporting. They're seeing CPU bottlenecks all over the place. Again, like I'm a developer, but I'm long out of... Uh, this kind of low-level development that I know what's going on with DirectX development, so I cannot confirm any of this. But I've seen enough uh, people complain about this and enough reports that it makes me uh, think this is a very, very cheap way of implementing this. And uh, it probably explains why it's so buggy and unstable uh, for a lot of people and why it drops frame rates like crazy for a lot of people and even for those that can achieve a stable 60 frames per second. Um, yeah, I shouldn't have said stable. That can achieve 60 frames per second. It's not stable. It, they still have frame drops every now and then. Uh, so that doesn't impress me. Uh, I thought the game looked perfectly fine, especially with several of the mods out there. Um, that really improved the visual quality. Um, the most important thing, however, is that um, unlike what they initially announced, that this was going to be a pure graphical update that's not going to change a whole lot, they basically changed almost the entire game in terms of the script files, the quest files, uh, mostly just taking mods from online and integrating them without actually letting the modders in question know that their mods are now in the game. Now, tons of this stuff is not even represented in any of the patch notes. So modders that I've been in contact with are now scrambling to figure out, okay, what did this update actually change? Like massive revamp mods like ghost mode, uh, the makers are now struggling to figure out, okay, we now first need to check what has actually been changed. And then basically every single change that our mod has done needs to be redone because they changed skills, they changed how quests work, they changed certain dialogues. Obviously, they integrated fixes. The problem is a lot of these fixes were already in a ton of mods. And now they basically integrated a ton of mods, but a lot of people don't know which version of the mod did they integrate. Did they actually pick the new one? or Because a lot of people seem to have indications that they downloaded the mods at some point and then integrated it into the next-gen update. But by the, by the time they had downloaded it, the mod had actually fixed further things. So now that... The modders have to try and figure out, okay, which one of our 6,000 fixes did they actually integrate and which ones did they miss? Um, yeah, and obviously they changed other stuff around, some of which is good. I think they changed a few skills for the better. It, the problem is most of the overhaul mods that existed already did that. Now, I understand, obviously, that all these fixes moving into uh, the console space is great for console users. Um the problem is, yeah, if they had properly communicated with modders, they could probably have gotten the newest and best version of all these mods and the best mods out there and, and really integrate them into a proper fix pack. That apparently never happened. Um, so I'm not so sure how worth this new version is to play. So 
let me also quickly go into something else here in case you are uh, worried about all your mods breaking which they will most of the mods are just not gonna work like not even the mod launchers uh, work with this new version because it also changes a ton of xml files that that deal with the main menu so the way uh, mods install themselves into the main menu so you can configure them uh, it doesn't work anymore properly uh, the mod managers can't handle that because they changed the layout of these xml files and all that kind of stuff uh, in Steam, you are going to have the problem. I didn't actually check how that works on GOG, but I think they have a similar thing there. But on Steam, there's basically no way for you to avoid this update if you want to play the game. Like, you can put your uh, settings here in the game on how to handle updates. Uh, you can say, okay, d d only do it when I launch it, or uh, always keep it updated, or even do it as a high priority, but you can basically not tell this thing to never update the game. Uh, so as soon, at the latest, as soon as you're going to launch it, it's it's going to pull the update. And that's going to break all the mods. I'm, uh, if that is fine with you, I would actually recommend completely deinstalling the game, deleting all your mods, like your save games, save games are obviously going to be fine. Uh, they're living in a different location and they're also in the Steam cloud. But get rid of, deinstall the game, delete the game folder, and then reinstall the new version fresh. Because if you have already mods running and stuff, I wouldn't trust that whatever Steam does is actually producing a properly working uh, version. So if you want to play with the next gen, I would recommend deinstalling your old version completely and maybe copy and pasting it uh, in a different location. So you maybe still have it, which will probably work the easiest with the uh, GOG version. Now, as you might see here, what it says here, Witcher 3, the Wild Hunt classic. Um, what they did, thankfully, is put the classic version here under beta. So if you want to play the old one, the default selection will be this. And then uh, it will say in the background there, oh, yeah, we need to, uh, there's going to be a uh, download here. And then it says, oh, my God, yeah, we need to absolutely uh, update this game. Um, however, if I go back and tell it, no, 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 don't do that. I want classic. Uh, it's not going to do anything like that. It's going to validate the game files and it's going to say, okay, yeah, you're ready to play. Uh, this is actually um, the modded version. I hope it's not overriding things now. I actually did this now after uh, the launch. If it did override anything, I have a backup. That's not a problem. But uh, the ideal version would be don't, like this is after I launched the game already. So it might now actually try to override some stuff. So if that happens... Uh, the best version is make a copy of your existing Witcher 3 before you do any of this, uh, before you let it update or anything like that, and just copy the files, including all the mods and everything you have, uh, into a zip file or whatever. And if it, it does try to do anything here, you can just copy the files over your existing ones and override it. But the end point is here, if you select this beta and you say, okay, run that one, it's going to switch here to Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Classic. And I already checked that my mods are all still working, my save games are all still working, everything works exactly as it did before. Uh, the only thing that is quite annoying is that they added the launcher. So if you start the game as normal, instead of now immediately launching the game it is starting a launcher and if you have the classic version selected here that launcher will actually produce an error saying it can't launch the game please validate your installation the problem with that is that by default there is a little bit of a, a button uh, on the launcher i can't show you right now because it's it's validating over here um, that will say direct x12 Switch that to direct back to direct x11 and the classic version will launch just fine. So th that is the reason why um, I'm right now not really producing any content for Witcher 3. I was initially planning to do a full new playthrough. Um, but with all the mods, all the mod collections installed uh, and I was just waiting for a... Uh, updated version let me actually see whether it uh, launches the launcher if i do this or if it does that only once nope it still launches the launcher as i as you can see here you need to switch this uh back to direct x11 um, and i'm going to check that later whether it did override any of my mods but 
as I said, even if it did, I have all that backed up. So if you do this, as, as it will say here, it's ready to play, it's up to date, it will not do any of the next gen changes. And if you play with mods, um, and if you want to stick to those mods, I would highly recommend that you do this because basically every mod that changes any script file, any quest file, or any kind of thing that is not purely a texture or something like that is going to break. And even the texture stuff is probably going to interfere uh, with whatever model changes they made. So if you have some new armor textures or stuff like that, that's probably also going to break. Um so the mod situation is now basically completely chaotic. If you now go on Nexus and you try to find mods, you need to really pay attention. Some mods update for next gen. Some mods are basically exist now in two versions, one for classic and one for next gen. Some mods haven't been updated at all. And the original developer is probably not even in the community anymore so some of these mods are probably gone forever unless someone else picks them up which can be a rights issue on nexus um again, concerning copyright of the original mod so those things will have to be resolved and are quite a little bit of a problem because as i mentioned right now most people don't even know what CD Projekt actually changed because they didn't put all the changes in detail into any kind of change list. Uh, there are mod pages now on Nexus where people try to figure out, okay, which files have actually been changed. These modders literally go through all the files and do a comparison and try to figure out, okay, which ones of these files have actually been changed. And then they need to try and figure out what in those files has actually been changed and which of these changes were changes that mods created and they just integrated the mods and which changes were from CD Projekt themselves. Um, so yeah, you, you can basically get from this that this is a little bit of a mess right now. Not only is the game buggy and unstable and crashes when you change graphic settings during the running game and stuff like that and... Uh, while it looks good when it runs, um, some people have also questioned whether this graphics update was even worth it. Um, because there had been some cool mods out there that introduced some uh, new water uh, shaders and stuff like that, which arguably look a lot better than what they have in the next-gen version. Wasn't perfect, was also still a little bit buggy, but was on a great way to become really something really cool. And those things were implemented basically by one person um, in their free time, writing a couple of shaders and some uh, stuff. So, yeah, obviously the graphics update is a big deal for the next-gen consoles for PC users, especially ones that were heavily using a ton of mods. Uh, this is a little bit of a... Yeah, disappointment and the next disaster of a PC release after Cyberpunk. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm personally getting a little bit mad at CD Projekt because they apparently haven't learned a thing still about how to do a proper release and not taking shortcuts because... If this is really the case, and again, I haven't looked into it in detail, maybe someone that is a little bit more up to date on the actual technical uh, uh, department, maybe someone that is actively involved in engine uh, development or in game development on that slow level, sorry, can maybe comment on that. Uh, I know, obviously, that bridges from one uh, DirectX API to another one exist. That stuff happened in the past. I've even been involved in an open source uh, upgrade of an old game engine that, that used something like this. You can intercept calls to the graphics driver to DirectX and, and translate them into a newer version or even uh, do some fancy stuff introducing new effects by reinterpreting these calls to that code. If that is really how they integrate, how they created this Direct12 version, by simply reinterpreting DirectX commands from the existing game and, and translating them into Direct12 instead of properly uh, doing a native Direct12 version. That is not just lazy, that is also not stable. That's not what that is supposed to be for. That That is, from what I know, Microsoft 
makes those things available to, for backwards compatibility or to get something working in, in an emergency or to just yeah maybe uh, do some testing or something like that but that is usually not intended to be a for making a proper next gen release um so yeah th doing it like this is if that is really what happened here then that is just the most lazy thing i've ever seen um if that is truly what they did here and truly what i think this bridge uh the start x 11 12 bridge is actually what it's doing um, because that also means that if you switch from back to 11 it, it basically bypasses this bridge and simply accesses the original DirectX 11 render code obviously so that would explain why there's such a, such a high CPU usage which my CPU probably actually could handle because I have one of those Intel CPUs that is uh, in, capable of boosting one core very high because i actually funnily enough bought that to play witcher one because witcher one funnily enough is way more demanding demanding on a single core than the other games are um especially if you run certain mods with it um so i don't know whether my cpu would actually be able to handle this load but uh, it, it's still pretty ridiculous that some people out there with the most modern CPUs out there um, are still getting CPU bottlenecked, uh, even in the main menu, funnily enough, because, yeah, if this bridge is active, it's going to translate all the render calls to direct, from Direct 11 to Direct 12 on the CPU. So uh, that uh, is going to happen even if there's not much graphically going on so you have this additional load on your cpu constantly even if in the game there's not actually a whole lot going on even if you're in the inventory or in the main menu or something like that so that's just yet another kind of technical disaster for a pc release that cd project produced here and yeah this is just my recommendation if you want a stable gameplay and you want to wait, wait until this uh, mess has been resolved, this is my recommendation. Go into the settings. Again, you go to this gear on your on your game page. Um, you go into properties, then a window opens and it always opens on my central monitor here. I need to move that over. And then you go into betas and you select the classic branch. Uh, which yeah it says betas but it's it's not a beta it's it's just the original uh 132 release uh, they just put it in here because that's the only place where you can actually put different versions of the game select that and then let it let it do its thing and and maybe let this next generation thing wait a little while until CD project hopefully uh puts in the work to make this work properly and um, until some modders also had to had the time to update all the most important mods, uh, I still hope. I still, yeah, hope. I, I'm I'm actually pretty sure that we're definitely going to lose out on a bunch of mods because I know there are some pretty important mods where the original creators are no longer around. Maybe someone is going to pick those up and make a new version of them. Um, I don't know, but. Uh, there's pretty much a guarantee that most of the important mods out there are not going to work with the next gen version just not even close they even need to update all the mod uh installation tools um because they also changed a whole bunch of stuff um in regards to those so that's basically my uh feedback to this next gen version i haven't played it for one second because i don't want to break everything i set up here i spent literally years setting up this mod collection and adding to it and keeping it updated and keeping all the mods working together and uh, even adding to the mods changing them a little bit putting in some of my own fixes and um, i had a game that looked great played great and had everything i wanted and right when i had that version working and i just wanted a pure graphics update um, they put out a, a version that not only breaks most of the graphics, uh, but also um, unannounced introduced introduces features uh, and changes and fixes that nobody ever 
mentioned before the release what was going to happen so no modder was prepared for it and uh, if they actually said like i remember that years ago they clearly said no 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 we're not going to fix anything we're not going to do any bug fixes or any new quests there's going to be a pure graphics update so it's not going to break anything or anything like that instead they just People have even detected on what kind of mods they integrated. They basically just sorted Nexus by most downloaded and just integrated those mods, like leaving out the boob mods and all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, instead of actually filtering by most endorsed or by most used, because there were a lot of mods that were actually much newer and hadn't been downloaded that often yet, but were fantastic mods that introduced great... Uh, features or restored stuff or fixes uh, that could have actually been much better uh, to to add to the game instead of some of the stuff they included here so yeah i don't know what went on here i don't know why they didn't talk to the modding community a little bit more to actually figure out which mods were the were the best candidates to be integrated here uh, work with the modders to make sure they all work perfectly together and and yeah, also communicate with them so everybody actually knew what the mod list changes were going to be so all the other mods would have had a chance to get updated in time for release. So by release time, all the people that wanted to use mods were still going to be able to use them. But instead, we're now having this mess. Um, so this is at least the solution. At least they added this classic beta version here so you can play the version that we know and love and know actually works properly um, and has a familiar performance and let's just wait and see what happens to this next ver gen version i'm personally not impressed i think it's the, it's, it's the next disaster release the next underreported disaster release for pc uh, i'm not sure how happy the console guys are with their version what they're getting probably a little bit more but for pc users for pc gamers which yeah again is the very community that made cd project what they are since which are one only released on pc uh they basically got screwed over by this uh in my view so that basically tells you how much of respect CD Projekt has for their core uh, audience, which used to be the PC gamers. Um, they yet again pushed out an unfinished release uh, onto PC and the other platforms, uh, yet again caused a number of bugs and performance issues, and also basically broke every single mod collection out there um, unannounced, um, and didn't, did at no point ever release a proper list of changes uh, so modders can actually figure out what they need to do to update their existing mods, which is just, from my perspective, a very disrespectful thing to do. So if you still think CD Projekt is this company that is in such a great, uh, has such great relationships with its community, um, yeah, I, I don't see that anymore. And I'm very disappointed with how this next gen release went so that's basically my video for the next gen until i see that in a actual state that is worth playing like you're not going to see any witcher 3 content from me because yeah I, i'm i will of course play these games at some point again but from what this looks right now i'm not sure i'm ever going to play the next gen version and i'm very happy that there's at least a classic version here like I would know how to get a classic version working because I backed it up obviously but if you can just click the exe file and bypassing all the steam stuff then steam won't update it but the problem with that is you also lose the cloud backup of your save game files and your setting files and all that kind of stuff uh, obviously yeah you can live without that and just back up your save games yourself but it's obviously nicer if you still have access to the cloud features, which this hopefully will guarantee. And I hope this classic version doesn't go away, but sticks around. So um, you always have that available, even in the future. Because as I said, right now, I never see myself upgrading to this next gen version, because uh, considering how broken and of a mess it is and how 
it's unlikely that all the mods that I used are ever going to get upgraded. And I also really don't feel like... Like, I'm running basically almost 200 mods. I'm not in the mood to go through every single one of those and figure out what the new next-gen version of it is, if even one existed, and then trying to figure out what I did to these mods to change them, to reintegrate all my changes. That's just going to be a nightmare. It's going to take me weeks and months to figure out. And from what I'm seeing, what this next-gen version actually adds uh, in terms of graphical fidelity and new stuff, I don't even see that being worth all that work. So... Yeah, that's my two cents uh, in a, again, way too long video. But uh, yeah, maybe this helped someone to uh, revert back to the classic edition and get their mods working again. If so, let me know in the comments and maybe give me your feedback on what you think of the next gen updates. Do you have problems on PC? Uh, do your mod, did your mods break without you realizing? Um, or are you playing it on console and you're just happy with it? Let me know um and this uh yeah is it for a while i'm still thinking about what i could do in terms of witcher content um i'm letting you know but a next gen playthrough is probably not gonna happen anytime soon see you around folks